Good afternoon. My name is Anat Admati. I'm a professor of finance and economics at this graduate school of business, Stanford, where we are right now. And I also got involved symbolically for now at 0% appointment as a professor in the new Door School uh, of Sustainability here uh, at Stanford. Uh, I'm also the faculty director of the Corporations and Society Initiative, CASI, which um, is uh, co-sponsoring this event. CASI is a, relies on students, faculty, and staff effort to focus on promoting good governance so that corporations, markets, and government can best serve society. And organizing events like this for the community is one of the things that we do. I had the pleasure of organizing this event with Michael Wara, sitting right here, acting director of the Sustainability Accelerator at the School of Sustainability, the new school, which is also co-sponsoring the event. Uh, Michael is also the director of climate and energy policy program and a senior research scholar at the Stanford Woods Institute for the Environment. Uh, and you'll hear from him in the second panel today. So the issue we'll be taking up today, uh, this afternoon, are top of mind everywhere, but particularly in California and the West, which are now experiencing the impact of climate change in some very real ways as catastrophic fires and smoke ravage large areas of the state on a regular basis, and where utilities, insurance companies, as well as governments and people must face the challenge of how to deal with the risk of fires and other impacts of climate change, and more broadly, uh, how to make sure that we have reliable, clean, and affordable energy. So we brought together a number of experts who in the next three hours will help us to get a closer look and insight on the issues as we focus specifically on the case of Pacific Gas and Electric, the company providing our electricity here today, uh, right now, so let's hope they're good for that uh, as a case study. <laughs> Uh, before, before we start, I want to introduce uh, and invite uh, our Dean John Levin from the Business School. And following him, he will invite Arun Majumdar, the Dean of Door School of Sustainability, who unfortunately can't be here in person, but will offer a brief opening remarks. So Dean Levin, thank you. Thank you, uh, Anat. And uh, welcome, everyone, to today's conference on uh, corporations and climate risk, the case of PG&E which is, as Anat said, co-sponsored by the GSB's Corporations and Society Initiative and the Stanford uh, Door School Sustainability Accelerator. And I particularly want to thank Michael Wara uh, from the Door School and Anat for organizing uh, this, this conference. Um, today's event is one of uh, a series of conferences that the Business School and the Door School are co-organizing this year. I believe we're doing 17 in total, looking at issues at the intersection of business and, uh, and sustainability. And um, you know, I'm, I, the launch of the Door School has uh, spurred a really terrific collaboration between the, the two schools and is incredibly timely given the importance of climate and sustainability issues for, for business. Uh, one of the things that we have recognized at the GSB in recent years is the way that the landscape for corporations and for business leadership has changed in very fundamental ways where major societal issues like climate change have impinged on business and have called, people are calling on business to play a larger role in addressing and finding solutions to some of the big societal challenges that we, that we face. And in a sense, that raises all kinds of fundamental questions about what is the purpose of corporations, in whose interests do they serve, what is the role of business leaders, the Corporation Society Initiative, which Anat Admadi started a number of years ago at the GSB and has been leading, uh, was set up precisely to enable a broader range of conversations about those topics uh, in collaboration with students and faculty and people coming from outside the, the school. And this event is very much in keeping with that effort and the broader effort at the business school to engage with issues at the intersection of business and government and society. Um, in fact, the, the pg and &E is almost an ideal case to look at, actually, because the issues around pg and &E are fundamentally issues about governance and overlapping responsibility and the intersection of different stakeholders, whether it's 
the regulatory agencies, the customers of PG&E, the investors in PG&E, and all of the rest of the firms that make up California's energy ecosystem, as well as the people who have been affected by accidents and fires uh, that have come from the, the PG&E distribution lines. And they are complicated issues. There's not, these are, as you'll hear in these panels, these are issues with a lot of, a lot of complexity, a lot of history, and, and no simple solution uh, to be realized. And so I really look forward to hearing from, we have an amazing set of panelists in two consecutive sessions who are going to illuminate us about the, the history of PG&E, how some of the issues have arisen, what some of the complexities are, and hopefully point the way to a path forward that's constructive for everybody in this state uh, and, and uh, involved with PG&E. So thank you again to Anat and Michael for, for uh, having the conference. And I'll hand it off to my fellow Dean Arun Majumdar, who is the inaugural dean of the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. Uh, welcome, Arun. Well, thank you, John, for, um, for getting this started. I want to also thank the organizers, Michael Wara and Anat, Admadi and others for putting this together. And um, as a partnership between GSB and the Door School, um, I just returned from COP27 in Egypt. And my impression was it's like the Olympics of climate change. And it's a combination of Olympics and Las Vegas, frankly, of climate change. Um, and, you know, there are 200 nations invited um, among, you know, with broad representation for government, businesses, nonprofits, academic uh, institutions. And entering that meeting, I, you know, it's, it occurred to me that 40,000 people there and no one was wearing masks. And as my, I think I told someone, I hope no one gets COVID. And guess what? I got COVID. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I hope no one else gets it, um, but th which is why I cannot be with you today. But I wanted to also uh, be there in at least in spirit and and I wanted to make, you know, and I was asked to make some opening remarks and happy to do that. Um, I think what was quite apparent at this COP27 is the scale and urgency of this global transition, which is the scale is just unprecedented in human history. And there are risks involved during this transition that really must be understood. And uh, this has been highlighted by the case of PG&E. And there's some important lessons to be learned from that. And I hope in the discussion, we can get into these lessons learned. I was able to get through part of Catherine Blunt's book, um, California Burning. And this is a remarkable and outstanding book that goes into the history of the electricity sector, but really highlights you know, some of the you know, systemic issues that are going on. And I suspect you will be discussing this book in more detail. But stepping back from it, you know, if there's any lessons learned, it is that every corporation, government, and institution should ask the question, are we prepared for climate change? Do we have the, do we have any, the equivalent of Caribou Palermo lines in our assets or in our system? Is there a team that should be in place to evaluate the risks and take urgent measures to address them? And do they have the right incentives to actually go out and do it? Because if, as we have seen in the pg &E case, the cost of inaction can be much greater than the cost of action. And I think that's an important lesson that's not just for pg &E, but for um, in every organization that will face some level of risks uh, due to climate change. I would also say this is not just a pg &E case. It's much more complex, as John was pointing out. pg &E is an investor-owned utility, and it's a regulated utility that follows the rules and regulations set forth by the California Utility Commission, CPUC. Its business model, based on return on asset investments, is based on that regulatory framework. So does the regulatory framework allow investments in upgrading the infrastructure? Are the regulators sufficiently aware of the risks of climate change? And is there a different regulatory framework and business model needed to address the risks of climate change. It is also noteworthy that the electric power infrastructure that we have today is not designed for extreme weather events induced by climate change. And this is not the electric power. Many of our infrastructures are the same way. 
As you know, this year in early September, we found the California grid to be pushed to the limit, almost to the brink of failure, with a record breaking, I think roughly 52,000 52, megawatts of power demand. The only reason it survived is that because storage did not follow the market signals because otherwise the grid would have could have come down, but then scheduled and delayed so that it actually takes power when the demand is not that high, not at the peak, because that's when you, the market signals would tell you that, but they didn't follow the market signals. And thanks to Cal ISO and others, that happened. And also there was this very important text alert that was approved by the governor that was sent out to all the citizens, which reduced the load by roughly 3000 megawatts. So this raises other sets of questions. Do we have the right system in place, the infrastructure, the regulations, markets, the assets, and our communication with our customers to ride out these extreme events? And it is a very important lesson learned from this that you need a whole systemic approach to addressing these events that happen. And you know, in February of last year, right after the Texas freeze, I wrote an op-ed in New York Times where the opening line was, we are playing Russian roulette with climate change. It is not a question of if, but when it will come to our neighborhood. So this is, again, it's not a thing that you know, we are insulated from it and others are not. Everyone really, really needs to ask these questions. And I think we'll only be successful if we understand the real risks involved, take action now, work together, and innovate and implement our, our way out of it. And in the immortal words of Martin Luther King, we really must do this with a fierce urgency of now. And it is with this sense of urgency and scale that brings us together. Indeed, this is why the Door School recently became Stanford's first school in 75 years. This is, we feel that it, this is a big enough issue that requires a big enough response from academia, from Stanford, which is why we launched the school. And it was really created to foster and be part of collaborative effort to address, to address the changes, the, the challenges and the opportunities brought forth by climate change and broadly on sustainability. So again, I'm, I'm so pleased to be with you and, and that this, uh, this partnership between Door School and the Graduate School of Business is such an important uh, attribute to, this, uh, to, this, uh, uh, to Stanford's efforts. So thank you very much. And I really look forward to the discussion.